different technologies, which is the new merger between one of the companies that we own, United Technologies, coming together, and there is a vote on that merger on Friday. If that vote goes through, then we're going to end up with a new company, the second largest aerospace company in the industry that sells at very inexpensive multiples at about 15, 16 times earnings. United Technologies most likely will spin off Otis, which is their elevator manufacturing. They'll spin off a Courier, which is their heating and air conditioning control unit. And they will rename the company Raytheon Technologies. The shareholders of United Technologies will get about 57% of the new entity and the balance will go to the Raytheon shareholders. Personally, I think it's a better play if you want to participate in this merger to buy United Technologies because you'll end up with three units coming out of that merger. What I really wanted to talk to you guys today about is 5G. 5G is one of these super cycles in technology that we participate in. The big question of 5G is that how companies are going to monetize that transition into 5G. One of the problems is, how do you market 5G? It's very difficult for people to conceptualize that, and it's very difficult for companies such as Apple, that is on target to sell about 120 million new iPhones that are 5G capable next year. However, the benefits of 5G are huge. Better latency, higher data. You're talking about speeds anywhere from 40 times faster to 100 times faster than the 4G. Some people say that we need killer applications out there to make 5G uh, marketable. Some of the previous killer applications that came out when 4G was launched were Uber Technologies, for example, Instagram, Snapchat. And then we have issues with 5G with companies like Huawei that is being blocked out of that market. Yet, China is one of the biggest players in 5G. Over the weekend, I came across an article that was talking about China by 2020 having 300 cities that are 5G capable. In 2020, they are talking about 600,000 base stations that are 5G capable, of which half of these 600,000 base stations are all in China. One of the companies that come to mind is Taiwan Semiconductors. The issue with this company is that it is not cheap. This is a semiconductors manufacturer that sells today at about 20 plus times earnings. They are expected to make in US dollars about $2.60 next year, whereas historically this company used to sell at 17 times earnings. However, the reason I want to talk about Taiwan Semiconductors is because Huawei will have to find ways to replace the existing 5G suppliers. And Taiwan Semiconductors is in a sweet spot right now to do that. 50% of all semiconductors are manufactured around the world by Taiwan Semiconductors. Companies like Apple, Qualcomm, AMD, NVIDIA, they manufacture these semiconductors and they are the first to market with 7 nanometer technology, which saves energy and brings about a lot of efficiency. Not only that, they are the first ones that are going to start manufacturing these semiconductors with 5 nanotechnology. When they do that, we'll be able to bring about 50% better performance and 30% power reduction. This is a company that pays 3.4% dividends. This is a company that has today in free cash flow about $9 billion per year. It spends $11 billion every year on new technologies. They are paying 70% of that free cash flow in dividends and buybacks. Revenues are expected to grow in 2020, 12%. And their earnings per share is expected to grow in 2020, 20%. These super cycles are creating new product categories as well as companies becoming increasingly more valuable. The company I'm going to look at today is largely seen as the leader in virtual and augmented reality. The trajectory of the position of this company was largely set five years ago by the acquisition of the VR headset maker Oculus Rift. At the time of the acquisition, the amount was around $2 billion for Oculus. Facebook has taken another step just this last week in terms of bridging the physical and digital world by acquiring neural interface platform Control Labs. So Control Labs has a product called Control Kit. This product is a non-invasive neural interface platform. So what that means is it allows developers to create software that they can actually use their brain to tap into. Think of this application where users can wear the control kit headset and move prosthetic limbs, for example, 
or they can convert thoughts into things that move on a screen. So the neural interface bridge that makes this link possible is control kit. The vision by Facebook CEO's founder, Mark Zuckerberg, is entering this sort of VR type reality, but with the bridge being gaming as a first stop. No doubt there would be lots of financial upside for Facebook, and so it's highly valuable and something we're watching very closely. So I'm keeping an eye on the uh, treasury yield curves and the uh, difference between the uh, short-term and long-term interest rates. Um, we, we do see that the two-year to the 10-year uh, currently has a spread of about 12 basis points, so it is no longer inverted. The short term, the one to three month interest rates versus the 10 year has consistently remained inverted for about two and a half months now. So we are seeing a little bit of a positive movement there between the two year and the 10 year. As mentioned earlier, there's about an 80% chance that the Federal Reserve will give us another quarter percent rate reduction uh, in October, possibly another one towards the end of the year. It's important to keep in mind that the average lag between inversion and recession is about 12 to 18 months. And many analysts are indicating that if there is an economic environment with unemployment numbers where they're where they are and GDP numbers still looking positive, that if we were to avoid a uh, recession, this might be the type of environment where we'd be able to do that. Hello everybody and thank you again for watching our videos. I'm Amit Stavinsky, the Managing Director of Tamar Securities and its affiliates, 911 Financial Services and Firefighters United. As always, if you like the content, please become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. The highlight of the week is that during times of slower growth domestically and internationally, it is important for investors to look at growth opportunities in areas such as augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and 5G. Thank you.